chapter 26. And it shall be, when you are come into the land, which the Lord your God give you for an inheritance, and dost possess it, and dwell therein, that you shall take of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you shall bring in from the land that the Lord your God gives you. And you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. And you shall come unto the priest that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord your God, that I am come unto the land which the Lord swore unto all our fathers to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of your hand, and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall speak, say before the Lord your God, A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there. Few in number, and he became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians dealt ill with us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. And we cried unto the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice, and saw our affliction, and our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with a great terribleness, and with signs, and with wonders. And he hath brought us into this place, and hath given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first of the fruit of the land, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you sh shall set it down before the Lord your God, and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good which the Lord your God has given unto you, and unto your house, you, and the Levite, and the stranger that is in the midst of you. And when you have made an end of tithing all the tithe of your increase in the third year, which is the year of the tithing, and hath given it unto the Levite, to the stranger, and to the fatherless, to the widow, that, the, that they may eat within your gates, and be satisfied. Then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have put away the hallowed things out of my house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, to the widow, and according to all your commandment which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed any of your commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in my morning, neither have I put away thereof, being unclean, nor given thereof for the dead. I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look forth from your holy habitation, from heaven, and bless your people Israel, and the land which you have given us, as you did swear unto our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. This day Lord your God commandeth you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore observe and do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have avouched the Lord this day to be your God, and you wouldest walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his ordinances and hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched you this day to be his own treasure, and he has promised you and that you shouldest keep all his commandments and to make you high above all nations that he hath made in praise and in name and in glory, and that you mayest be a holy people unto the Lord your God, as he has spoken. Now let's go back up here to verse 1. And it shall be when you are come unto the land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance, and dost possess it and dwell therein, and you shall take of the first of the fruit of the ground which you shall bring in the from your land that the Lord your God gives you, and you shall put it in the basket, and shall go into the place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. All right, what we're talking about here is after you've come into this promised land and you have rest there, you, you gather up these first fruits that you've planted in the ground. Now this word first here, this word first, first is, it actually means choice. It's like a choice fruit. You want to take the choice fruit, not necessarily the first fruit, because it may not be the best, and not nearly the best fruit, because it may come at the end. But what you want to do is take the choice fruit, and God teaches us in earlier chapters how to choose this fruit. We have to choose fruit that is has no blemish. It is like it is perfect in its size and its shape. There's no discoloration, see. It's, it's of choice fruit, one that appeals to your eye, see, because it has to be a choice you've made, something that is pleasing to your eye, something that you can offer to God and that he accepted. This is what happened to Cain and Abel. See, this is what happened to Jacob and Esau. See, 
we offer an offering, the choice fruit of our eyes, unto God. Let's move on. And you shall come, verse 3, unto the priest that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord your God, that I am come unto the land which the Lord swore unto our fathers to give us. And so what you're telling us, you brought your basket there, and you told the priest that I've come into this land that the Lord God's promised. This is my bounty and the proof of this. And the priest takes the basket in verse 4 out of your hands, and he sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God. This is where you make your offering at, is at the altar of God. 5. And you shall speak and say before the Lord your God, A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, a few in number, and he became there a nation great and mighty and populous. And this Aramean, the same as a uh, Assyrian, we know Abraham, come down out of Syria, out of the Mesopotamia area. He was in, around in that area. And he journeyed down, but Jacob is the one who went down into Egypt. And he was there till he died. Of course, his children is the ones we're talking about, as God told Abraham, or Abraham yes, that he would his children would be in Egypt for four generations see so in verse 6 and the Egyptians dealt ill with us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage this is while the house of Israel was in Egypt they did deal harshly with them they, and we, we know when Joseph went, first went in they had it made they got the choicest of the land the best of everything but then after that Pharaoh died the other Pharaoh didn't hold him in quite as much favor Seven, and we cried unto the Lord of the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice, and saw our affliction, and our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt, and a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs, and with wonders. And he brought us into this place, and hath given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And you know, this is the, God did this because it, this is an example of what he's going to do today what he's doing today with this outstretched arm with great terribleness with signs and with wonders God is performing the same task today See, God is pouring the truth out into the world now so that he can destroy all the wickedness and when you see this you're going to understand that he's bringing you out in his covenant with an outstretched arm and with great signs and with great wonders we'll learn this as we go through the book and where is he going to bring you to? A place flowing with milk and honey. And now behold, I have brought this first fruit, the choice fruit of the land, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. For see, God's given you, given you this. And these first fruits of the basket have a, a higher spiritual understanding because, see, Israel's whole job is to be out in the world shedding this great light these ten teachings onto all the world this is the covenant God made this is the light this is our hope this is our, our rest somebody's got to teach this because the, if we lose sight of this we'll forget about God and we'll stray away and the world will be a horrible place to live much as it is this day we have to turn this around it's up to each one of us to grab hold to vouch for this to take hold of this and start to perform it and then we will be able to bring our little basket of fruit in before the Lord I shouldn't say a little basket it's going to be a big basket because see these first fruits will, they'll offer up that we can offer up our ourselves and we've made an end verse 12 of tithing all the tithe of your increase in the third year now we ain't talking about the other two years that you go down and you eat before the Lord now let's back up. Let's back up here to verse 11. And you shall rejoice in all the good which the Lord your God hath given unto you, and unto your house, you and the Levite and the stranger that is in the midst of you. So this is the two years you go down and carry your choice fruit, all your increase down before the Lord, and you and the Levite and the stranger and the widow and the fatherless and everybody within your gates has a has a, a assembly, a festival, a great party to enjoy the increase of God. Verse 12, that when you have made an end of tithing all the tithe of your increase 
in the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hath given it unto the Levite, to the stranger, to the fatherless, to the widow, that they may eat within your gates and be satisfied. Now this third year is not like the other two years, remember. The third year, we're going to take all of our increase and bestow it to these, the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, all within our gates, see, because the Levite, he has no portion. He has no inheritance. God is in his inheritance. The stranger, because he journeys among you and may or may not have understanding. The fatherless, why, is a, he never had no understanding. He had no father. The widow, her, her understanding was taken away. Her husband. That they may eat within your gates and be satisfied. See, we have to supply this increase for them in the third year. This is the law of tithe right here. Then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have put away the hallowed things out of my house, 13, and also have given them unto the Levite, and to the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all that you, your commandment, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed any of your commandments, neither have I forgotten them. And what, he, what you're saying here is these hallowed things, these things that I've set aside according to your law, according to the law of tithe, I've set aside... I have done according to that which you have required, and I have brought and given to the Levite. I have given to the fatherless, the widow, and the gates, and the year of tithing. I have brought my basket of choice fruits before you, and I have I've presented myself and these choice fruits before you according to your law. 14. And I have not eaten thereof in my morning. That means nobody's died, nobody's brought a morning food into your house. Neither have I put away thereof means I ain't had to bury nobody, being unclean, no given thereof for the dead. I don't even know anybody that's died. I ain't, I ain't even had to give nobody nothing for, uh, to show my respect for the dead. I've hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God. I've done according to all that you have commanded me. That I've not known these things, is what he's saying. Look forth from your holy habitation and from heaven, and bless the people of Israel and the land which you have given us, as you did swear unto our fathers a land flowing with milk and honey. And this is just a blessing. The whole thing is a blessing where that God you in thanks to God and He blesses you in return with more bounty than you had the year before. Seeing this day the Lord your God commanded you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore observe to do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have avouched seventeen the Lord this day to be your God and that you would walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his ordinances and listen unto his voice. This means you've come into agreement this day. They're getting ready to go into the promised land. This day you've entered into this agreement and you've agreed or swore, recognized, acknowledged this agreement, these commandments, these statutes. Um, we just went over a couple basically to bring your choice fruits before the Lord and celebrate for two years and the third year give your increase to the these that don't have this is God's welfare system to take care of those 18 and the Lord has avouched you this day to be his own treasure as he promised you and that you should keep all his commandments and basically God's agreeing if you'll agree God agrees it's an automatic thing as soon as you say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. I will walk after you. I will do according to everything you've said. God's good. Wham. He starts blessing you instantly. Keep your eyes on God. Don't fall away. Because as soon as we fall away, we start to stray from the blessings. And because we've agreed, we may be punished. God only, God only chastises those he loves. And when you make an agreement with God... He will begin to chastise you because you have come into his understanding and to make you high above all nations that he hath, this 19, in praise and in name and in glory and that you mayest be a holy people unto the Lord your God as he has spoken. And we'll find through the course of the book how God has used Israel to show us. He's, he took them in. He says, I'm going to make you my servant. I'm going to use you show all, everybody, all the nations that I am God and that I'm going to bless you I'm going to punish you 
and the world's going to see that I am God, how I can speak and accomplish. No man does these things. God does these things. He declared them from the beginning. And in the beginning, so is it today. We have to make a choice. We have to make a decision. We have to start being obedient to God. We have to come into this agreement with God. And that we can come into the promised land, which he promised us all. All right, let's journey on. Chapter 27.